The Mixing with Mike mixing tip is on using spectrum analyzers for processing or to help you with processing. Um, I'm actually not a huge fan of, of working generally with spectrum analyzers because um, the tendency is to sort of uh, end up, you end up what I call mixing to meter um, or mixing by meter. And um, I never really heard this term before. Uh, actually, that's not true. I didn't heard this term years and years ago. Uh, and then I came across an engineer who was really an amazing engineer who uh, I was assisting for. And um, he kind of pulled me aside one day. I'd been working with him on a bunch of sessions. And he said, listen, man, I want to tell you something. You know, because we were talking about it. He was like an amazing mix engineer. I was really blown away by the work that he did. He's always, and he was such a really funny guy. He was just like a great, an amazing personality in the studio. So he was really successful in getting tons of work. And I believe he came out of the Quad Studios. Um, uh, no, it wasn't Quad. It was Unique Recording. And Unique Recording um, spread. Um, there were a lot of amazing engineers that came out of there. Uh, Tom Lord Algae, Chris Lord Algae, um, another guy, Bob Rosa, um, who is an amazing engineer. Um, and I believe this guy was one of them. Uh, so there were just a, you know, there was a, a crop of really great engineers that came out during a certain period of time, and a lot of them broke. Um, there was a Steve Winwood record back in the High Life that came out, and a lot of those guys had done some work on that record, and then it won Grammys and all kinds of things, and then all those guys, their careers just really took off after that. But the term mixing by meter came because um, he confided in me that he was actually almost completely deaf in one ear. And here he was, you know, mixing records for the top artists in the world. I was working at a studio called Right Track, which is a class A, world-class recording studio. And uh, I was like, well, how do you do it? You know, like, how do you balance and, you know, do all these things? How do you manage, you know, the left to right and, you know, all these things? And he says, he says, I do a lot of mixing by meter. And, and he said, you notice that I mix a lot in mono. Um, and he mixed in mono because it would basically hear, he would hear all the sound through one ear very effectively. And then when he wanted to balance left and right things, he would actually just bring them up one at a time, match the levels, and then pan them and unmute them. And and this was like a whole big thing. And I was just really blown away by that because here's a guy that was able to mix effectively with one ear and really do amazing work, you know. And so it said there's some power in there. And there were some engineers that I worked with. There was actually a, but, uh, a button on some of the SSL consoles that had um, spectrum meters that it was spectra button that would turn all the console meters uh, into a spectrum analyzer. And some engineers just really loved this because they could look at stuff and they could see exactly where all the problems were. Now, I'm not, I'm calling up this uh, GEQ and, and there are many EQs um, um, that are out there that have spectrum analyzers built into them. And there's kind of a cool thing. I'm just bringing up this one uh, as an example here. And then I'm just going to set, you know, this um, up accordingly. But like, say, for example, I have like a particular sound. Like here I have like a shaker sound. And there's a lot of bleed in here. And, and when I look at this, I can sort of do an analysis of what's going on and kind of see where in the frequency spectrum where things are are most lined up like you could see like in this you know a lot of the drum energy is down here but the majority of the shaker energy is up at the top and this is not a difficult one because this is one where i would just say yeah you know that's cool so let's just kind of you know do something like this And, and so what I'm doing here is just kind of setting this up. I guess probably the easier way for me to do this would have been just to kind of sweep this right up, except you don't actually see what I'm doing. And it only goes up to nine, or like basically a little bit below 1K as well. So that's... But the idea here is that with this, I could sort of selectively 
see what's going on. And here I can actually um, show, you know, if I have the input here and the second side is my output, then I could show the difference here, which is exactly following, you know, my metering here. It looks like I can even still filter some of that sub stuff on, which I didn't know about. And, and use the analyzer as a way of seeing like, okay, this is the incoming signal, the blue is the outgoing signal, and I could see what the difference is between the two. And Because you can really see how much of that energy is really up there in that 12, 16K range. And the idea here is that, oops, I'm going to get out of draw mode here for a second. You can hear the, the sort of phasiness of the EQ. I have to decide like how much bleed that I want to keep in here. Or whether it's better to just let it kind of ride. Eliminate as much of the EQ as I can, you know, and just get as much of that stuff out. And then you can really hear that ringing of the, of the, um, uh, of the bell on the ride symbol. Um, but using the meter here, I can effectively see if I just bypass this, you know, where the majority of the shaker energy is, which is really all up here, not down here. And I could see as this snare and kick is hitting, and this may be obvious because it's just a shake, shaker track, but shakers actually have lower frequencies in this. But having this little bit of analysis shows me something that actually informs me. Now, normally, I just go about the process of doing it by ear and listening, and it's like A being, how is this affecting like the, um, the drum sound and everything else? Because if I take this in and out with all that bleed, that is a real dramatic effect on the drum sound. And I didn't need a spectrum analyzer necessarily to see that difference. But um, the, the power of using it is that you can really see the specific areas where something is most efficient or putting most of its energy. And then you can sort of apply your processing accordingly and uh, with some information. Um, this can also work effectively if you have like a stereo a recording of something and they seem to be imbalanced in terms of the frequency in the stereo version of this, you can actually see the difference between the left and the right side. And when you see that difference, it allows you to um, apply equalization that maybe evens out the frequencies between the left and the right side. And maybe that's a part of a, a different video. But um, it's um, a simple thing. Uh, a lot of EQs are, are putting them in uh, waves. The HEQ has this. You could always, always op open up a PAS analyzer. Uh, what I like about the fact that it's when it's built into the plugin, is that you can actually see a real-time analysis of different stages, pre-EQ, post-EQ, and really monitor what's going on. And that, that's what really uh, makes um, a spectrum analyzer or any kind of meter really um, accurate. Normally, um, what I would do with these types of things, because some people put them on every channel strip, is just to put it right on the mix bus and have something there right on the mix bus um, if you have just like a special meter plugin that you really like spectrum analyzer and then just leave it open or just kind of pop it open when you need it and then you could just kind of do your a b comparisons and solo up whatever it is that you're listening to and kind of get a good um, good analysis of what's going on anyway that's our uh, mixing tip of the week which is uh, using spectrum analyzers for processing